Okay, 5.8 logistic model, exponential growth of decay with the limit. So we've seen some exponential functions now. Uh, they've all been uninhibited, which doesn't make a lot of sense if you think about it a little bit. So um, there's a, another model that we could use. It's called a logistic model. So it has a complicated little thing over here. Uh, you can read through this at some point. I'll do a little bit of the highlights. Uh, this would be exponential decay. So this is a logistic decay model, so it's clearly it's going down, this would be a logistic growth model, and what you notice is that they have an asymptote, uh, well that technically there are two asymptotes, the asymptote uh, at the bottom is the x-axis, we also have an asymptote over here, um, if it's a decay model it means we started with a quantity and then over time it decreases to a, about zero, if it's growth, that means we start with an initial population and then the population grows for a while and then it stops growing as it approaches the asymptote. Um, that, that value up here, that, that C, um, that's usually called the carrying capacity of the model. That means that's the maximum that's supported by the environment, whether it's the maximum number of bacteria in a petri dish or the maximum number of fish in a pond. Uh, there are lots of examples that we can use for that. Where it gets to be a little confusing is over here in the in the exponents. So here it says that 1 plus a e negative bt, that's, that looks somewhat familiar. It says um, the model is growth if b is larger than 0. Well, if you make b larger than 0, and let's say I had uh, 200 divided by 1 plus a, let's make that 9, sorry, let's make a 9. Then we will get E, and then if I had a negative 0.2 T here, okay. This is with B being equal to 0 0.T, so the value for B is positive. There is always a negative here that you start with, okay. It makes sense mathematically because this negative would imply that the 9 E somehow goes to the top, and then you would see that, you know, it does get bigger and bigger all the time, okay. But to create that asymptote, we had to put it inside basically a rational expression. Uh, so with rational functions, we have asymptotes. So this is sort of a combination of m logistic growth and irrational. Um, sort of enough about the details there. Um, you know, there's an inflection point, for example, as well, where it goes from um, increasing faster and faster to still increasing but slower and slower, and then vice versa over here. Um, but we don't usually do a lot with that, at least not we. Uh, us and our bonus, and then the other thing is that uh, that is important, so the graph is smooth and continuous, so you do see it fits an exponential function in that sense. So let's just do an example. It says fruit flies are placed in a half pint milk bottle with banana, food, and yeast, and suppose that the fruit fly population after t days is given by. So here we have a complicated expression, right? Logistic model, because there is an exponential underneath the fraction bar, state the carrying capacity and the growth rate. Well, if you don't know what the carrying capacity is, um, then you could figure it out. Uh, so the carrying capacity comes from what happens when t goes to infinity. Okay? So the carrying capacity, if t was really large, so you would get 230 divided by 1 plus 56.5 to e and then a really large exponent here. So let's make t really large at 100. And then we would get a negative 0 0.37 times 100. Okay. Let's see what mathematically what happens there. You would get 1 plus 56.5 times this multiplies, right? So that gives me 37 and negative 37. So that means I'm multiplying this by e to the power of a negative 37. Well, the negative exponent would have put that e with the 56.5 as a fraction. So it would be 56.5 times 1 over e to the 37. Um, and then the last thing would be to sort of figure out, well, what do you think 56.5, don't write this down, or maybe on the side there for you, let me raise this in a minute. What do you think this would be worth? Well, e to the 37th, e is about 3, 3 to the 37 is huge. So you end up having like 56.5 divided by millions, like lots and lots and lots and lots of zeros. That's basically zero. So you end up with a zero here if you make t really large. So you end up with 230. 
The carrying capacity was the 230 that was on the top. Um, I think that it would be easier if you have that memorized a little bit, because then you wouldn't have to do a whole lot uh, for that part of the question. So, um, state the carrying capacity. So, A, the carrying capacity is 230. The growth rate is the number that is used for the exponent. So, the growth rate is 0 0.37. That is your growth rate. So, think of that as it gets larger by about 37% every day, because this isn't given in days, right? So, T is in days, so it's 0.37, so every day the population increases by about 37%. Determine the initial population. The initial population is when time is equal to zero. So, that is actually just, you know, sort of an evaluation. So we get 230. Right. This will be... A calculator problem, hopefully you figure that out. So what's negative 30.37 times 0? So that's just 0, right? So we get p to the power of 0 is equal to 230, and got an e here, sorry, divided by 1 plus 56.5, and you get e to the power of 0. Well, e to the power of 0 is just 1. So we get 230 divided by 57.5. If you do the math with the calculator, you actually get four flies. So the initial population is four fruit flies. C, what is the population after five days? So P5 would be when you use a five as an exponent inside the equation. So one plus 56.5 e to the exponent of negative 0 0.37 times 5. Okay. One of the challenges is how do you put this in the calculator. So one hint that I can give you, if my computer will go with me, is that I would use brackets here, okay, uh, so that you're dividing 230, not just by 1, but by 1 plus whatever this ends up being. And then here um, on your calculator, you might need a double set of brackets as well. So it would look probably more like this on most of you guys' calculators. 1 plus 56.5, and then times e, so you can use the times button there, e to the power of, and now we use a bracket here, negative 0 0.37 times 5. Okay, close that bracket. So those are all done, and then close that final bracket over here. So it should look something like that. If you plug that in your calculator, hopefully you get an answer that looks like 23 flies. Okay. Um, I forgot to write down what the decimal answer was. You need to either round up or down here. You, need to, you can't have part of the fly, so it is just custom here to sort of round up or down and, and, and give a whole number. How long before the population reaches 250? Change that, so I don't have the answer for that yet. Okay, so D would be how long before we get 250. So 250 is what I have over here, right? Make sure I have, yep. So we would be 230 over here, um, and then we'd uh, get 1 plus 56.5 e negative 0 0.37. Now, before you start, I want you to think back to question A, which said, what is the carrying capacity for the model? It's 230. So we can solve this, or we can answer the question right now. The carrying capacity is 230, and we need 250. Is it possible to get 250 out of here? So hopefully you're thinking, no, that is not possible. Okay? So that is... In this case, it would be not possible. Okay? Um, I think when I edited this, I should have had an D and an E. Uh, so let's look at a problem here where, what if it was uh, 180? So if it was 180, um, it would look very much like this, right? So how do you solve this? So 
if I'm looking at this and thinking, well, that's a product, or a cross product, we can make it a fraction. So this 180 is going to distribute here and here, possibly. Um, after I do that, I need to move some stuff around, divide by 56.5 at some point, and then that can finally take a natural log. Okay? And that's probably what I need to do. So let's see if I do it. the cross product first. So I can actually divide by 180 here, so I don't have to divide twice, or multiply and then divide. Um, then I can subtract the 1, right? So that takes care of this. And then that quantity needs to be divided by 56.5. So e to the negative 0.37t will be 230 divided by 180 minus 1, all divided by 56.5. To get the exponent down, you need to take a natural log on both sides. So then you get the natural log of 230 divided by 180 minus 1 divided by 56.5, and that would be a negative 0.37t, and then you divide this mass by a negative 0.37. If you solve this, you should get a time that is close to 14.4 days. I'm going to leave that up to you. Um, if you struggle with that, that is something you need to work on a couple times, and I'll help in class. If you come see me, then we can figure out how to use the calculator on that. Okay, thank you.